Worship for Sunday, April the 18th, 2021, the third Sunday of Easter. The Gospel for this third Sunday of Easter is always one in which the risen Christ shares food with the disciples, meals that are the Easter template for the meal we share each Sunday. In today's Gospel, Jesus both shares the disciples' food and shows them the meaning of his suffering, death, and resurrection through the scriptures, the two main elements of our Sunday worship. The Lord be with you. As we gather to worship in various places, may we be blessed by God who forms us in word, sacrament, and community. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Pastor Stephen Weber from St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Cambridge, Ontario, and I'm glad to have you join us for worship this day. In our prayers today, we pray for healing for John Husko. John had a heart attack this past Wednesday morning and is awaiting bypass surgery. We also pray for Mary Tobis on the death of her husband Hans on Saturday morning. May God comfort with the sure and certain hope of resurrection, all who mourn. Thank you to our Minister of Music, Katrina Lowe, for praying, playing a prelude and postlude for us today, as well as the musical portions of the Communion Liturgy. And thank you to our soloist today, Karen Azeroth. Thanks as well to Tim Weber for videotaping portions of today's worship, and also to our reader for this day, Josh Hyde. If you haven't yet prepared the elements, such as bread and wine for communion, you might want to pause this video and make them ready now. This past week, two people have told me that they seem to have been omitted from the email list to get notified about new worship videos. When I checked our email list, those names were indeed missing, but I have no idea why. I'm glad to add the addresses back in, so please do let me know if you don't seem to be getting notified. Before you do that, it might make sense to check your junk folder in your email program to make sure that the notices haven't ended up there. Each month, our Eastern Synod provides us with a mission minute to celebrate the work we do together. Today, we give thanks that our benevolence gifts through the Eastern Synod support the work of Martin Luther University College, which includes our seminary. In today's video, we spend time with Bishop Michael Price, Reverend Dr. Christine Lund, and Luther students who lift up and celebrate the important relationship that exists between the Eastern Synod and Martin Luther University College. Hi everybody. I greet you as a proud alumni and enthusiastic supporter of Martin Luther University College. The DNA and life of our Synod are tightly bound with that of Luther. And when we ensure the financial health and stability of our beloved theological school, we are investing in our church's future by raising up gifted and well-educated leaders for service, both in the church and in the wider community. It now gives me great joy to introduce Luther's Principal Dean, Reverend Dr. Christine Lund. Hello, I'm Christine Lund, Principal Dean of Martin Luther University College, or what we more affectionately call Luther. For 110 years, we have been your theological school. In addition to helping prepare students for rostered ministry, we support members of our entire church community at different points in their life's journey to deepen their knowledge and live out their ministry wherever they live and work. Your generosity also supports the Delton Glebe Counseling Center, which now offers mental health services through a secure online format or by telephone. Our mission has been made possible through your faithful giving. Thank you. The Luther community doesn't just train people for future ministry, it engages in hands-on ministry here and now. Um, so back in September, um, Anne and I recognized a gap for students. Um, students were coming to us. We kept asking, like, what do you need at this time, you know? Um, and students over and over were just saying, like, financially they were struggling. Um, students were really, really, really food insecure. So we've been doing this every week since then. And now we have 
it's around 55 students on average every single Thursday that comes. I think that I just, I mean, I love the community feel here and then also just how, um, how respectful it is for students who are facing food insecurity to come to an environment where they aren't asked those questions and pick up as much food as they need. Thank you, Luther. And thank you, my friends, for the faithful and generous support that you provide to Martin Luther University College through your benevolence offerings. Thank you for your gifts to others through your benevolence offerings, which do indeed make a difference in people's lives. In these challenging and unforeseeable times, if you find that you need someone to talk to, or if you need any assistance, please email me or phone me at the church office and I will help you. At whatever time and location you are accessing this, thank you for doing so. It is good to be together in whatever way possible in this time of physical distancing. We continue now with worship. I greet you with the ancient Easter greeting. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life, and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life, that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Children's Time, Earth Day. April the 22nd. I am so very glad that you're here today, and I know that you're bringing sunshine and joy wherever you are. There's a special day coming up this week all around the world, and I bet that from the title of today's Children's Time, you can probably guess what it is that this Thursday, April 20 the 2nd every year, is Earth Day. Because we love God, we also love the Earth that God made. And things that we love, we take care of, don't we? How many of you have seen the movie The Lorax? Or perhaps you've read the book by Dr. Zeus. It's a great story about caring for the earth. And it's about planting a last remaining tree seed. Here's a quote from the book and the movie. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. Let's watch a trailer from the movie, The Lorax. Welcome to Sneedville, a city they say that was plastic and fake. Bus, bus. And they liked it that way. No nature, no flowers, no one seemed to mind. But a secret was waiting for someone to find. Oh, hi, Ted. Do you want to see something cool? Whoa. What are those? Trees. They used to grow all around here. <laughs> what I want more than anything is to see a real living tree. From the creators of Despicable Me. I've got to leave here before I go. Whoa. No one ever leaves town. See what he's up to. Comes the world of Dr. Seuss as you've never seen it before. Okay. <laughs> so, you want to know what happened to the trees? Well, I didn't think anyone still cared. Well, that's me, the guy who still cares. It all started a long time ago when I accidentally summoned a mystical creature as old as time itself. The Lorax. Hey! Whoa. Whoa. Did you chop down this tree? <gasps> What's that? Hey! I think he did it. Huh? Mm. You need to change the way things are. I won't let you down. Ah! Mm. Whoa. You got a beautiful town here, Ted. I can't think of any reason you'd ever want to go outside of town again. Uh -huh. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. I think the Lorax meant for you to have this. The last seed. It's not about what it is. 
That's about what it can become. Bring it on, Teddy! I don't know, we have a little time. Dr. Seuss's The Lorax. In Bob Engelhart's cartoon, at the lower corner of the screen, uh, the Earth is saying, I have a headache. You know, my generation just has not done a very good job of caring for the Earth, of taking care of God's creation. I hope you'll be better at that than we adults have been. Now I invite you to move into your favorite prayer posture. It may be hands open facing up to receive the gift of God's presence in prayer. It may be hands folded and eyes closed to help you concentrate, or it may be crossing your arms across your chest to form an X, the first letter of Christ in Greek, and it feels like a hug from God. Now let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for giving us a beautiful and awesome creation. Help us to take care of your gift. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Your parents have children's bulletins for you that you're welcome to work on at any time, even while you're listening to the sermon. The Revealing of the Children of God God has loved us in order to make us children of God. Though we do not yet know the full details of our future existence, we trust that God will reveal it, just as God revealed Jesus to take away our sin. A reading from 1 John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord.
eating fish with the risen Christ. In this account of an appearance after his resurrection, Jesus opens the minds of the disciples to understand him as Messiah. Jesus convinces them that he has been raised and sends them on a mission as witnesses to proclaim the message of repentance and forgiveness. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. And he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. The Sermon Jesus of the Incarnation. Bruce Modell, a Lutheran pastor from Florida, recounts the story of being asked one time to visit someone who was dying. Pastor, my cousin is in General Hospital. Her name is Theta Mannheim. The family doesn't go to church. Won't you visit her? It was more of a command than a request, says Pastor Modell. Theta's cancel has spread, continued the concerned cousin. The doctors told her yesterday that there was no sense in surgery. Chemotherapy may give her a bit more time and ease the pain, but that's all. So I went to visit. I poked my head in the door. Theta was flat on her back. Her husband George was propped up beside her in a chair. I introduced myself. The first thing out of Theta's mouth was, we don't go to church. We wouldn't live any differently if we did go to church, so we don't go. She looked at her husband for confirmation, which he gave with a slight nod. He made scant eye contact with me, his eyes glancing off mine to gaze at nothing across the room. What I almost said to them, what I so wanted to say but didn't and haven't yet figured out if it was pastoral sensitivity or cowardice on my part, what I wanted to say was, so it wouldn't make any difference in how you live, but would it make any difference in how you die? That is the question I wanted to press on them. It is the question that would have made my visit helpful. Will faith make any difference in how we live and how we die? Jesus' resurrection at Easter means that we can live differently and that we can die differently. Because of Jesus' death and resurrection, we can die differently. For Jesus has shown us that death is not the end. In Christ Jesus, God has overcome the last enemy, death. And so we can die differently, confidently, knowing that the separation caused by death is only temporary. Because of Jesus' death and resurrection, we can die differently. And because of Jesus' life, we can live differently. In her weekly essay on the Gospel reading, Debbie Tom Thomas from Journey with Jesus writes that the Jesus of Easter is the Jesus of the Incarnation, the Jesus who grows in a womb, enters the world through a birth canal, sleeps in a feeding trough, and nurses at Mary's breast, the Jesus who scrapes his knees, roughhouses with his playmates, loses his parents during Passover, 
and goes through puberty in the backwaters of Nazareth. The Jesus who soaks in the waters of baptism, hungers for bread in the Judean wilderness, weeps at his friend's grave, flings a whip around the temple, appreciates scented oils on his feet and head, sweats blood in the Garden of Gethsemane, and suffers asphyxiation on a Roman cross. It is I myself, Jesus tells his wonderstruck disciples as they struggle to reorder all that they know about life and death, souls and bodies in the aftermath of this astonishing appearance. It is I myself, says Jesus, me, the one you know, the one you love, the one you trust, touch me and see. In Jesus, God has come close. In Jesus, God has entered into our lives so that we can enter into God's life. God sent the Son so that we too might become children of God, as it was proclaimed in today's appointed reading from the first letter of John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. What we do know is this. We will be like God. That new birth in Christ can be as messy, as unpredict unpredictable, and as frightening as any birth. And just like the birth of a firstborn child, new birth in Christ changes everything from the way we live to the way we die. Just as Christ Jesus came to the doubting, disbelieving disciples, so God comes to us even when we too doubt and disbelieve. Jesus is standing among us right here, right now, in the messiness and fear and anxiety of everyday life. What fears or doubts are you experiencing right now? What is of deep concern to you? What causes you to worry? What troubles you? I'm going to play some reflective music along with photos of Jesus, and I'd like you to talk with Jesus about your reality. Picture Jesus coming to meet you, to talk with you, and to share a meal with you. You'll have a full two minutes to meet with Jesus. Someday, as we near death, we will be met by Jesus saying, as he said to the disciples in today's gospel reading, It is I myself, me, the one you know, the one you love, the one you trust. Touch me and see. 
May that promise and hope not only change the way we die, but also the way we live as beloved children of God. And the people said, Amen.
alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. We pray saying, hear us, O God, and we respond with, your love is great. Living God, in the midst of Easter joy, we are still filled with questions and wondering. Open our hearts and minds as we encounter the scriptures so that the church embodies Jesus' love to all nations. Hear us, O God, your love is great. Creating God, like a master artist, you have fashioned the universe out of your love and delight. Heal your creation where it is in need of restoration. Make every day an Earth Day, that we might lower our carbon footprint and mitigate the effects of global climate change among the poor. Hear us, O God, your love is great. God of all, many call on you for guidance and strength. Answer their hopes and give your loving kindness to federal, provincial, and local leaders. We pray especially for our mayor, Catherine McGarry, healing from surgery last week. Guide our deputy mayor, Mike Mann, acting in her place. Hear us, O God, your love is great. Healing God, you hear the cries of those in need and answer them in their distress. Grant to those who are sick and suffering your compassion and nurse them back to health and wholeness, including John and all whom we name before you. Be close to the hearts of all in need, including Mary and her family and friends, as they mourn the death of Hans. Hear us, O God, your love is great. Loving parent, you have given us such love that we should be called the children of God. Reveal yourself to us so that we will become more and more like you in our mutual care and bold witness. Hear us, O God. Your love is great. God of all people, as our municipal government considers the location of a new consumption and treatment site for Cambridge, create timely and caring decisions that foster the common good, save lives, and recognize your love for each and every one of us. Bless the work of all who help in providing vaccines. Keep our frontline workers safe and give them much needed rest. Move us each to do our part in following the guidance of our public health authorities so that our health system does not become overwhelmed. Hear us, O oh God, your love is great. God of all times and ages, those who have died in you now see you as you are. We thank you for their lives among us. Assure us of your presence that we join them in everlasting life. Hear us, O oh God, your love is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and love, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. We share that peace. Let us pray. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world for the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you.
It is indeed right to give you thanks and praise, O God, for you have raised Jesus from the dead and swallowed up death forever. You made the world and all that is in it. You made this day, and we will be glad and rejoice in it. For this is the day your prophets testified about when you destroy the shroud of death and open the gates of salvation. You sent your Son, Jesus, among us, anointed with your Holy Spirit and power to preach peace and heal all who were oppressed. When he was put to death and buried, you opened the tomb and raised him on this day. Now we need never again search for him in the places of buried dreams, for he is alive and reaches out to us, walking with us and going ahead of us. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Mighty Lord, gracious Father, endless is your mercy and eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. We praise you for the grace shown to your people in every age, the promise to Israel, the rescue from Egypt, the gift of the promised land, the words of the prophet, and at this, the end of all the ages, the gift of your Son, who proclaimed the good news in word and deed, and was obedient to your will, even to giving his life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, with this bread and cup, we remember the life our Lord offered for us. And believing the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised feast. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, that all who share in Christ's body and blood may live to the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all your saints in light. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and every place. And unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now we are bold to pray.
the risen Christ invites us to his table. Come, eat, and be satisfied. Let us pray. Wellspring of joy, through this meal you have put gladness into our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the promise of the empty tomb, the joy of Mary in the garden, the renewed belief of Thomas, the eagerness of the disciples returning from Emmaus, the love of Peter, told three times, and the peace of the risen Christ be with you this Easter, and the blessing of God be with you and all those you love this day and every day. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.